Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's the evening. Grab your wine wherever you are, or if you're in the US, probably don't drink yet. I don't want to get you in trouble. We're going international, and sorry, no, this isn't the football. But all will be revealed in 20 seconds. I hear Wales did terrible today. I'm sorry, my brothers. Anyways, 12 seconds, and we will be ready. Seven seconds. Woo! Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in on this special moment. If I've managed to pull you away from the screens from the World Cup, I appreciate you being here. And if you're watching the replay, then that's okay, too. I'm joined by a fantastic guest who is international as well. And no, we are not. Um, we're not avoiding speaking to each other because this isn't the World Cup. We're all friends here. I'm joined by an awesome person, unfortunately not related to Paul McCartney, one of my personal heroes. But, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's the next best thing in the architecture world. Brian McCartney, how are you, sir? Are you okay? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for having me. I'm really, really Brilliant. pleased to be here. Brilliant. And I was so impressed by your thumbnail that today we've got some fighting talk. So I've got my si fighting, you know, we're going to we we're gonna kick ass and take names and there talk about a subject which is close to my heart. Now, before we go into it, and a little hint, it's about partly about some awesome websites, but also some websites where you're like, how has this made this to, to go live? But before we go into that and talk about my pet peeves, Brian, you do a lot more than websites as well. Can you tell us a bit about yeah. yourself, please? Yeah. Uh, so uh, my background, actually, I was trained as a, dra a graphic designer way back in the day when we when we did everything uh, in print. Um, I uh, I uh, I kind of graduated uh, when websites started coming around and graduated to designing websites that was back in the late 90s uh for crying out loud that was a long time seems like <laughs> ages ago um i uh i've worked uh i've had clients like general motors lipton foods uh really big brands that you're familiar with on a day-to-day -day basis uh but then um uh, my wife and i uh, when we lived in uh, we lived in Switzerland for a while, we both got recruited to uh, run firms in Switzerland. And uh, during that experience living overseas, we started our first agency together. And uh, so when we came back to the U.S. Uh, uh, 2012 or so, uh, we at first we were just kind of kind of like a generalist agency. You know, we we worked with a lot of small local businesses. And then we uh, we worked with our first architect, and it was such a great experience that we we shifted our business to focus on architecture, and we've done that ever since. So, uh, so we run an architecture marketing and branding agency now. Uh, we help architects. Basically, there's three things we help with: uh, recognition, so helping them get found online, helping them. Yeah, there it is. There's our website. Uh, so we help them get found online, help them make a good f first impression with their website, but also their web presence, social, Google business profile, that kind of thing. Uh, we help with reputation. So we help, we actually help clients, our clients create content for their websites, for their social media, for email campaigns. Uh, the first, so, so that's kind of the reputation part of what we do. And then there's the reach part of what we do, helping them to build relationships uh, with uh, potential partners, clients, other people who can bring them the ideal clients and projects that they want to want to work on. So that's, I love him. That's the sum up. <laughs> I love it. Well, it's an important part. Now, Brian, I've got a little flashy thing in the corner saying that my web might be unstable so can you still hear me i'm gonna do a i can check. i can you did your your video free, froze up for there for a second but then you came back so it, it couldn't keep up with the entertainment you i know, know but I'm, we, just, we... I'm just overflowing you with value here so <laughs> <laughs> if we freeze up it's okay uh, the, do you know what i learned actually is that when it comes to video stuff 
It's the audio which matters most, more, better, yes. more than anything, you know? Absolutely. And especially Absolutely. if you've got a well struggling mug, maybe it's a benefit I'm frozen sometimes, you know? <laughs> but it's very, it's very interesting what you've done. And I always think that, well, of course, I love architecture. I studied it myself. But some of the best recruiters that I've worked with and stuff, you don't necessarily have to be in the industry. And I do think, especially with marketing and stuff, sometimes you can get a fresh set pair of eyes. So one of the examples we talked about a bit just before we went live was in terms of the content of the website, you accurately talked about recruitment as well. And I always find that sometimes when designing a website, especially an architect show, you naturally gravitate towards the projects. The projects must look good. And you, maybe you talk yeah. about the about page, but I sometimes feel it's a missed opportunity to talk about culture of a company and also to talk about the job vacancies there. Whereas actually a lot of people, maybe that aren't just the clients as well, could gain that information, could gain a lot of value from a website. So before we jump into the nitty gritty of what doesn't work on a website, I'd love to get right. your thoughts on that as well. Have you had some clients which successfully talk about their jobs and recruitment and the culture of work in there as well as the projects? So, so I think this gets to something that, uh, you know, you kind of alluded to, right? Um, architects tend to focus on themselves and their business and, and their industry. Um, and you know, we, we, we have, there's, there's, uh, we've came up, uh, I, I think it was during COVID, came up this, uh, this uh, social media post, uh, the, the seven deadly sins of architecture marketing. And one of them was the sin of isolation. And a lot of times architects don't look outside of their realm, right? And, and what we see a lot is that there's repeated patterns. And one of the key repeated patterns is that we're focusing everything about the projects just like you said like like there's like oh the project it's the portfolio that's why people are coming to us but that's not mm -hmm. necessarily true uh, a lot of clients are are coming to your website like if we look in the residential space right a lot of clients don't yeah. know that they need an architect right then and, and a lot mm -hmm. of architects haven't figured this out so they're presenting all these projects but they're not really talking about the problems that those clients might encounter the the pain points that they might have the reasons they might need an architect um mm. the same goes from like a recruitment aspect right uh if 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 you're having problems attracting uh, uh talent to your firm and you look at your website and it's just all pretty pictures well yeah. it, you got to put yourself in their seat right like Hey, yeah. do I want to work with this firm? All they all they talk about is, you know, who works there, right? I I, I see so many times on websites where, and I've heard this from owners, from firm owners, who say, "Well, we don't want to put our team on the website because, you know, what if somebody leaves?" Well, okay, we kind of a bit of I'm, trust, right, Brian? You know? Yeah, yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, you know, first of all, we gotta want them to stay, right? We gotta give them reasons <laughs> to stay. Right. You know, if we're that worried about them leaving, then maybe there's other problems to solve. But secondly, I think, you know, if you're not if you're not talking about your team, other people who are coming to your website are going to take notice of that. Right. If I'm looking yeah. for a job, I want to look I want to work at a firm that actually appreciates its staff, that features them, that talks about their skills and their capabilities. Uh this is something that I've seen time and time again, and and we really encourage our clients to, yeah, to include your staff, to talk about your team. Yes, we realize that people might leave at some point, but that's not a reason to like make it all about just the principles, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so giving people a sense of who's involved, who's on the team, who are you going to be seeing when you come into our office? Um uh, what are the skill sets that we have is an important part of communication and, and communicating the value that you can bring to your clients. So uh, the other thing, too, is that uh, often we don't see a lot of discussion about what the architecture firm is good at. 
right? So many firms mm. have this mentality like, well, if we're just a generalist firm, if we, you know, we can do any kind of project. And, and this is a big mistake. It, it really does help to define what you want to be known for because you can't be known for everything. You have to pick a lane. And yeah. uh, a lot of times when we go to websites, what we just what we see, you know, they may have a blog, let's say, right? A blog is a great way to communicate your expertise, your insights, and your experience. Mm -hmm. What we see is a big focus on like, oh, well, we won this award or we did this project or yeah. um, uh, uh, I, I don't know. We got we got into a magazine. Well, that as a client, uh, as 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 somebody who's interested in working with you, it really doesn't tell me a lot about what you do or or what you specialize in. I want to know what your opinions are, what your positions are. You know, uh, it, I know in the UK, we have a client in the UK. A big thing right now is, you know, with the with the changes in government and so forth, we don't know where we're going to end up with these uh, these the, the legislations around the uh, the uh, the mm. incentives or the penalties for sustainable building and so forth. Um, yeah. Where do you stand as an architect on those kind of issues? Right. How are you going to help your clients navigate those things in the future and build a, a, a building or a home that's going to be uh, going to be energy efficient, going to be less expensive to maintain and uh, 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 keep up to date? So, yeah, those are all things that we can be talking about on our websites. I love it. And when you were when you were going when you were talking there, Brian, I had to get my stress ball out because the thing is, <laughs> I'm going to do a confession online. Is that while I don't run an architecture website, the Architecture Social, for better and worse, I designed myself. Which you could think, hooray! But let me tell you, I've got a lot of gray hairs, which I'm I'm like stealthing here. And websites, I yeah, I love them to death, but at the same time. It's not as simple as just knocking up a Squarespace. Mm. And and we're not even going into the SEO, what you're talking about with Google oh, Shifts, yeah. proper information, becoming an authority on the subject. Those are like long-term, you know, targets. And you can do it. And I do think for anyone, I promise this episode was, will not be about SEO. It is important, though, and you have to do it, right? Okay? That's the bad news. You can't get it's, around it. It's a him. fundamental best practice. Let's put it that way. It's a fundamental <laughs> best practice. That's kind of like the behind-the-scenes stuff, right, which is important, and yeah. people will probably consult with you on this stuff. However, I will, I will say where SEO does tie into what you said, Brian, and you touched upon really well, is news, blogging, sharing opinions. And I can understand why sometimes people feel tempted to not do it because there is an element of upkeep, right? No one likes a news section sure. where something is from... 11 months ago is the most recent. You do have to stay yeah. on top of it a bit. But yeah. I think, though, it is a massive opportunity because you can get all your staff involved with it. You can have an opinion piece. It can get picked up in the news, potentially. But also, yeah. if you're smart, you can feed it into Google News. You can feed it into SEO. And it kind of keeps the website alive. Now, do you, what is your opinion on blogging? I, I suspect that you're a fan of it, right? Um, as yeah, or, it's a, in terms it's, of web. It, yeah, it's absolutely. It's a key part of what we do with our clients. Is you know, and and yeah, there is there is a process that you need to need to establish to do it yeah. consistently. Um, you know, a lot of people will ask me, you know, uh, uh, well, okay, Brian, you say we need to blog. How often do we need to blog? Well, it's kind of up to you. And, and yeah. there's some things that you can look at to determine that, which get very technical and looking at like your competitors and so forth. But, yeah. but here's, the, here's the thing. Um, quality over quantity, basically, right? Mm -hmm. If you... So if you're a residential architect, it's better to have either one big article that talks about the ins and outs of residential architecture, helps clients really understand that process, or having a series of articles that are related to that topic. Like I said, you got to pick a lane. And the more specific, more narrow you can pick a lane, the, the more 
uh, the the content becomes obvious, right? Right. I, I, one of the fears that a lot of clients come to us when they when we talk about blogging is like, well, I don't know what I'm going to write about. Well, actually, it's pretty easy, right? What do you do best? What are the mm -hmm. things you enjoy? What what mm -hmm. opinions do you have? It's not that hard to come up with the ideas. The production yeah. side, yeah, it takes a little bit of effort, but it's it. Once you have a process and once you define it, that one article can be turned into so many things. Yeah. It can be turned into social media posts. It can be uh, mentioned in your email, uh, your email campaigns. It can be uh, repurposed into, uh, you know, video clips where mm. it's you, you know, talking about that topic. There are so many things you can do with that content. Uh, to repurpose it. That's the that's the marketing term that we use, repurposing. Yeah. But you want to make the most of the content that you're creating, for sure. Yeah, well said. And I try my best as well, because that even transcends, like, if, like, for instance, this interview, if you were smart with it, you can cut it up into little sound bites, put it on your website, make an article sure. around it, embed it. I completely agree. I'm going to do a quick into interlude brian because a lovely member of our audience devin says um so apparently this is pre-recorded is there going to be any discussion here devin it's not pre-recorded this is live so yes. you can say what you want you did put your website here however me and brian are not going to critique it today because i don't want to get in trouble i and and i'm sure brian thinks the same but Devin, i really appreciate you sharing it and we will I will think about critiques in the future, but I like things to be complimentary. This is not. Um, hey, if we have time, we're going to look at Devin's website. How's okay. that? Okay. <laughs> All right, Devin, if you're here at the end, we'll look at your website. Okay. And and um, if there's nothing nice to say, we'll find something. I promise. Devin, stick around here. Oz says a quick comment that I will read out before we move on saying, Architects miss a lot of opportunities. I thought this is because architects are siloed in their craft. I think it's really important for architects to learn tech skills and enter the contemporary online economy. Um, yeah, I, I I agree, Oz. I think that, you know, any business, I know the problem, I think, Brian, isn't it? When you run in a business, you've got loads of stuff. You've got to get yeah. your, your in, the, in the tax reports. You've kind of got to win the work. You've got to do the architecture. You've got to hire people and do a website and i can see the temptation is not to get involved and pay someone to do it but my view brian is that it's good to have some understanding of the website because like yeah. you say doing blog posts and stuff if you're confident enough to do it you want to be able to do it easily and it's typically not complicated would you also advise architects to get involved a little bit even if it's not their comfort zone in stuff oh, like yeah. websites Ab absolutely i mean i think i think you have to be involved you have to know what's yeah. going on right i mean at what level is going to depend on you the size of the firm how yeah. how you know how comfortable you are with that you know we have clients that are very hands-on and they're they're very much very much involved we do try to minimize their involvement like like not 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 so they're not you know involved but because we know that the demands on their time are pretty high and so we want to make our interactions with them as beneficial and as valuable as possible so we we structure those in a way that we can get the information that we need from them we can answer their questions and we can do that uh, without having to be on the phone every other day and 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 distracting them from the things that they're really focused on. So that's a that's a key element of our service is, is trying to figure out, okay, what's going to work best for you? How involved are you going to be? Or are you going to delegate some of that to somebody yeah. you trust in the firm? And and we're going to, you know, we, we have that situation with some clients where we don't work always with the firm owner or leader. We might sometimes work with a uh, uh, an associate that is really responsible for that part of the firm's operation, the the marketing and branding side. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what, what we're talking about is if there's any like architectural professionals in the audience, right? I still think the same stuff we're talking about, Brian, applies that can be applied to them as a, on a personal business, on a personal basis, right? So for example, oh, yeah. me, I used to have my old little website when I was a student and I put my work up and stuff. Yeah. And it probably got like 
five viewers a month, right? But I kind of did it for me. And it was right. like sharpening the sheath. And I think that, especially in 2022, as important as it is for a business to have a website, I think that there's an awful lot of personal brand that is really powerful. And it's like, I think it's like an extension of a business card. And as you as a marketeer yeah. right now, would you also, for anyone listening, go, guys, this is not just for businesses who practice in architecture. Would absolutely. you recommend people look at websites, Brian? Ab absolutely. I mean, so here's the thing. Um, a lot of people focus attention on social media and I, I don't want to, I don't want to slag on social media or anything like that, but I, you know, social media has its place and there's a reason we call it social media. It's a great networking tool. It's a great way to get your, you get your stuff out to a lot of people. Yeah. But, but the thing is, is that with social media, they are in control of that real estate. Yeah. They yeah. make the rules. The The social media platform determines who sees your stuff, how 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 much of it, uh, how much of your stuff that people see. They uh, they set those rules and they can change those rules at any time. And, 100%. you know, for those of us who know, like, you know, with Facebook, they went from, hey, you know, you could have a business page and everybody on your contact list was going to see all that stuff to suddenly like only one percent are going to actually see that and that was wow. pretty much it was almost overnight that they did that uh you know just in internet years uh but uh, uh so so your website is the one thing that you can control uh it's the one place where you can design the message you can uh present that in the way that is unique to you and uh, that showcases the things that you want to present. And from a personal brand perspective, yes, it's a very powerful tool. Um, now, you mentioned Squarespace earlier, and I do want to say this. So we we had our professional agency website on Squarespace for many years. Yeah, it's yeah. a great platform. And if you're looking to just get a start, a platform like Wix or Squarespace or I don't know, there's so many out there now these days. Yeah. That can be a great way to start because it, yeah. it it can allow you to just focus on getting stuff on the web rather yeah. than worrying about like having to learn a new skill, right? Because they're drag mm. and drop, they're easy to use. Um, and I highly recommend that if you're just starting out. Like if you're, you know, if you're just a couple of years into your career and you want to have a personal space on the internet where you can showcase the things that are important to you, where you can share your opinions outside of the work sphere, I highly recommend having a website of your own. And Squarespace is a great place to get started. Any any that, kind of tool like that. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I think you're right. Um, nothing wrong, with especially starting up, especially on a personal basis. I think what better way to <laughs> kind of get that online, you know, CV and, and portfolio going. <laughs> Now I've I've I, so I do not get accused of clickbait, Brian. I a part of this was saying like why a lot of architecture websites are so useless, right? Yeah. And and I know it's a bit of a ballsy title, but I think that there's a lot of offenses that architecture practices make. And maybe if you run an architecture practice, have a think about do these or do these not apply to your website. So I'll tell you bit number Less so now, but is the worst offender of them all. Used to be the JavaScript flash loading websites yeah. with the bars that would take a million years to load. Yes. And then when they load, they're all old and cranky, right? So that's my number one offender from before. Now the equivalent is unoptimized, huge images, which you can't load on your mobile phone on the go. It's yes. not everyone looks on their desktop believe it or not a lot of people sometimes more than 50 percent on mobile so that's one of my pet peeves when we're talking about this subject brian are there any that stick out in your mind of uh, <laughs> top offenders uh, yeah, not the names the kind of the, the no, offenses, no, yeah. if that makes yeah. sense yeah so um just give everybody a little bit of background on this so our team uh Anytime we have a new uh, potential new client come in or um, uh, back in the day when we were first starting out, we we got a list of architecture firm websites. And 
so far, I think we've done over uh, 650 evaluations of architecture firm websites. So mm -hmm. these are things that we look at, look at all the time. And uh, uh, your your JavaScript uh, uh, Flash uh, uh, example. So I think I think that accounts for about 10 percent of the sites that we've looked at so far over over the past several years and that's <sighs> way too high i mean essentially yeah. those sites do not work flash does not is not no longer supported on the web so yeah. uh so if you have a if you're sitting there thinking ah, i haven't looked at my website in a while it don't uh, work <laughs> anymore right <laughs> yeah, exactly um some of the other things that uh are are big pet peeves um uh hidden contact information uh, believe it or not mm. a lot of people uh see seem to think it's 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 a good idea to hide all their contact information and just yeah. have a form uh let me ask you when was the last time you you filled out a contact us form i hate the contact forms brian yeah. i have no idea if they've got there or not i can't yeah. customize it that much yeah, Do not it's, use it's, the forms. It's yeah. like it's there because we all, you know, we're supposed to have it there, but really, uh, where you're, where you're, where where you wanted on your website, I I prefer to have a phone number or a click to call button up in the top right because mm -hmm. that is where we all look. We all look for information in the top right. It's just how we're yeah. programmed. Um, I do not recommend, this is uh, another pet peeve, I do not recommend putting your social links up there. And here's why. Mm. It's a, just an invitation to allow people to leave your website, go get distracted on social media and never think about you again. Correct. So put those in your footer, right? Well said, because I always view, and it might sound as a shock, I love LinkedIn. I think it's a great platform. I'm, I'm glad we're here. However, the dot com is, as you said earlier, and I'm going to reiterate your point, the dot com is what I can control. Okay. Maybe yeah. a Google algorithm will come on, but it generally I can control that dot com. It's much better than, as you said, than Instagram is a great example because it's a very visual platform. Architects love it. Yeah. And suddenly TikToks come. So Instagram now is like, pictures don't really get much of a waiting. It's all about videos. So yeah. it's suddenly very hard for people to grow on Instagram. They get worried about why. And you're right, it's because you're at mercy at the algorithm. Whereas I think with a website, you have much more control. You can add content there. And if you work on the SEO, then yeah. fantastic. So to your point, why if people are on the website, do you then send them away to another platform where an ad can pop up and they go, oh, yeah. look at the so-and-so architects, click that, and then they're gone. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's just a huge mistake. And, um, you know, it's great to have your social links on your website, but you don't need to display them so prominently that somebody is just going to disappear. The other thing about, I want to, I want because you reminded me of something when you were talking there about social media. So, one of the things about social media, and this is a little bit different with LinkedIn, and I think it's why we talk about why why we recommend LinkedIn to so many of our clients. Yeah. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you really have to build a following. So you invest all this time building a following. All of a sudden, they decide to change their rules. And you're kind of like, oh, wait a minute. I don't have those. You know, I didn't capture those emails. I don't have any way to really connect with those people anymore. And, you know, this is basically what Facebook did to us years ago. Mm. Um, and they happen to own Instagram. So who knows what they're going to do next, right? Um, mm. LinkedIn is a little bit different uh, where uh, it, it allows you to connect with people that you don't know. You can send out connection requests. You got to be careful about that. You can't do too many in one go because they'll, they'll, I've I've nope. been put in the LinkedIn jail and I had to beg to be taken out. Yeah. Luckily, yeah, you were you were you were overclocking the uh, connection uh, requests. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so you have to follow their rules, but it does allow you to reach out to people and connect with people that you never met before, and and yeah. so you can do that. So that LinkedIn's okay, but where you really should focus your effort is collecting emails, collecting contact information 
on your website. And the best mm. way to do that is to offer something of value to people visiting, um, mm. whether it's a download, whether it's a webinar or a video or whatever it might be. Yeah. Give people something so they, they can experience your expertise, your experience, your knowledge, your know-how, uh, but give them something of value so that they're willing to give over give something of value to you, which is their contact information. So you can continue to engage with them over time. That's, that's a really thing. That's something I think people overlook about social media. It's not like you own those contacts at all. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and especially when you talk about email campaigns and stuff like that, there's gotta be a, a reason to, to give away that information just before we, we build upon that point, Brian. Yogesh says hi, and he says that he agrees that most people and company websites already want to be there. Now, Yogesh is an old friend of mine and actually has the misfortune, I should say, of living for me when we studied in architecture. So, Yogesh, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do a call out and, and thank you for sharing your points. He is a fantastic, talented architect. Yogesh, love you to death. Uh, building upon that point now, Brian, I, I mean, I... I, I agree. So uh, when I think about websites in particular as well, let's talk about as user interface briefly for a little bit, just before yeah. we go. So ha it's, to me, it's very, very important. And you said that you're programmed to tour, you to look in the top right for where to go. And so I found on my website that people go to the top right and the first thing they click on is jobs right yeah. and the second thing they click on typically is salary guides because i mean the architecture social is a bit different well that's and that's something of value that you're offering to your audience exactly right and what i learned is so i've got as well on my salary guide to go to your point about emails is that so people can enter the salary guide anyways but if they want to be kept up to date constantly of current salaries as they change in the market put in your email or make a job alert. And from yeah. that, Brian, then people type in the emails. Um, you know, if I put like contact form and like you said, a little, please sign up to my email. Yeah. No one's interested. You have to reach out to them. And I'm not talking about me. I'm saying, do you want to be update, up to date of London salaries as they pop up monthly? Yes, no, enter. And then people enter. Where I've seen it in architectural terms work quite well is, for example, an architecture practice gives away a very quick um, feasibility study. You know, can we do something in there? And people sign up for an email or they get in contact and, you know, it's 10 minutes for the architects of sure. work. They get an introduction. I'm yeah. not too fa a big fan of giving away stuff for free anymore because, no. you know, I run a business and my, 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 my bills come uh, whether or not I've given lots away for free or not. And right. we as architects, I think, need to learn that we have to retain our value and not give stuff away for free and reduce fees. That aside, though, uh, building upon your point, Ryan, I do agree. You have to have a valuable, what's the what's the marketing term? You've got to have something. A lead magnet. A lead magnet. Well, that sounds all right, kind of cool and stuff, a yeah. lead magnet. Yeah. What, what may be a good example, Brian, quick, obviously, obviously it's case by case in business. So Can you give an example of a lead magnet. Yeah. So, for example, a lead magnet could be uh, just a PDF download that uh, maybe is a checklist of uh, the key things you need uh, to kind of gather before yeah. you go and talk to an architect. Right. It could be like a what we call a project preparation package. Right. Helping you understand Hey, these are the things that, you know, architects typically are going to want to ask you. These, mm -hmm. the, it'd be helpful to know this kind of information before you come in, right? Yeah. Another thing would be, uh, for example, uh, could be a guide on how to choose an architect. What is the process that you need to go through? You know, what kind of architect do you need? Uh, helping you, just kind of asking you questions, giving you a checklist to kind of run through to really determine, like, Who's going to be the best architect for you? What are the questions that I need to ask an architect to know that they're a good fit for me? So things like that can be uh, really simple, uh, easy to put together uh, uh, lead magnet. Uh, like you said, uh, having kind of a consultation call. Now, uh, I do recommend these because typically people want to talk to somebody and it's a good option, but it doesn't mm. have to be you, the lead architect. 
right? Right. Um, you know, you could have an associate in in the and you could have an admin, you could have a office manager who has a script and who knows, hey, these are the questions I need to ask. And oh, if they say things like this, that, and the other, well, mm. I need to I need to ask them a few more questions, and then they can get scheduled with the architect, right? So it doesn't always have to go. Not everything has to be uh, going through your uh, for you know taking up your time, right? Yeah, yeah, well said. I, and I think we've covered one or two of the bugbears of websites. Well, I was on this point of offering constructive ideas because they are so really useful, Brian. Maybe what I was going to say is, if it's cool, I'll tell one thing that I think a lot of architectural practices miss, which I think is a missed opportunity. And then if you fancy sharing one, we'll sure. give away that juicy nugget. And then any more juicy nuggets, people can tap you up on your website, which I'll put Absolutely. in the end. Right. But so the one I think is the biggest one which gets missed, we touched upon it a bit earlier, is company culture. Right. And I yeah. think that seeing pictures in the office or people working remotely, getting those updates, people seeing what it's like to work in an environment, any giving back to the community, what the staff are up to, if there's an office dog. Uh, insights into the company they're not only beneficial in terms of recruitment because people will apply i also though pe i think companies like to work with companies which treat their employers good and i agree with what you said earlier of how ha not having people on the website doesn't make sense and yeah. let me give you where some recruitment news right if someone's thinking of leaving whether they are on the website or not, Brian, they're going to look, okay? So you're right. Yeah. By focusing on company culture and building it up, uh, then the more and more better, the more and more proud you can be as a company. And I think there's no negatives. It's a, it's a great way to build content. It's a great way to advertise your ethos. And you can probably save a lot of money on recruitment. I mean, before you talk about your point, is there anything you want to add to that, if you agree well, yeah. on it? I mean, absolutely. And, and, and it doesn't have to, like, it doesn't matter if you have a team or not, even if it's just you, a picture of you interacting with the client, a picture of you out at the job site, making mm -hmm. sure that everything's built, being built to spec, um, you know, a picture of you working in, in the office uh, on some design ideas, you know, a picture, a video, whatever it may be, uh, People want, people do business with people. They do not do business with black boxes, right? Which your yeah. website, if it's not going to talk about anything other than your projects, it's basically a black box and we don't know what we're getting on the other side. So yeah, that's, that's definitely, uh, I think it's, it's definitely important to be human on the web, uh, more and more, uh, uh, you know, it used to be all you needed was a brochure on the web. You know, basically you just yeah. needed a a, a a kind of a glorified brochure. But that's that's not how we're doing business anymore. The more that we use the web, the more comfortable we are with it. The more we expect uh, that websites are going to give us and help us understand that uh, that that firm. So, um, uh, so from my standpoint in terms of things that I think are really important uh, for your website. Um, and this is really like, even before you start thinking about the website, you have to be very clear about what your goals are for your website, because that's going mm. to help determine what your website should be saying, what what kind of information you're going to want to present to people. You have to have a concept of like, you know, I mean, if you just go at it like, oh, we just need to put up our portfolio. Well, yeah, you can just, you know, you just get a, you know, go probably get a Google photos page and just put that up. But that that's not going to, that's not going to help people understand your business. Um, you need to figure out who it is you're talking to. Are you talking to residential clients? Are you talking to uh, re retail companies, you know, that are looking to wow their customers and create a great experience? Are you looking at people uh, who, uh, you know, I know uh, because my client in London, I know that, the, you know, a lot of people, they, they want to expand their homes, right? But they have, they can't. They, they don't have the land to expand. So they're, it's some, type, some people are going down into the basement yeah. level. Some people are building on top. Some people are putting up structures in their backyard. So 
help people, you know, help, you know, pick your lane, figure mm. out what the key questions are that people are going to want to know or, or going to want to search for online uh, that are going to bring them to you. Start with that as a concept for your website. How are we going to attract, educate, inform, engage, entertain people who we want to work with? How are we going to give them that great first impression so that when they think about an architect, they think about us first? Mm, well said. Well, I'll give you, if you give, well, actually, I was going to give you, we'll do the, those were some kick ass points there. So there we go. But I'll give you a little round of applause for that. I appreciate that, Brian. It's well said. And I, and, and I think that it, it's quite interesting because I start freestyling in this as well because once you've built a website up and you've been involved in, in the, web design a lot i mean the gains from it are exponential it yeah. just takes a bit of time to get going and, and the other it's like Go anything on, else it's an investment right yeah you know you invest you know you mentioned earlier and i, I want to come back to this because i, I think mm. it was a point that i didn't i didn't get to make um you talk about like architects they you know one of the things that works against you like i talked about isolation right looking outside of your industry and one of the yep. things that works against architects is the fact that you have to you have to keep getting these educational hours right and for, oh, for, for a lot of people okay. that makes it really difficult to like say oh, I'm going to go learn about marketing or I'm going to go learn about finance or whatever it may be. But I tell you what, you know, you, you have to find a way to figure out what is important for your business and, you know, and, and, and get the skills, get the information you need or find somebody to help you because that's the only way you're going to have a successful business. You are not going to learn about you know, you might learn about some of those skills in, in at a, uh, you know, at a, I don't know what you hear in the U.S. We call them CEUs, uh, the 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 yeah. uh, the credits. Uh, you might get some of that information from those courses, but generally, that's not what they're talking about. And you got to look for that outside of architecture. Yeah, Brian, I've got mixed mixed feelings about them because I've been to one of back in my, when I was an architectural assistant, right. I was broke, so I used to love signing up to them because they used to get free sandwiches and they used to know certain providers used to yeah. really splash out. And one yep. or two, they'd be the opposite. And I was like, I'm not going to go see them because the sandwiches ain't good. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but there was one or two really good things there. And actually, maybe there's an opportunity there for content on the website. Who knows? But I think if you can turn something which, like you say, is um, a requirement into something where you could talk about it, and maybe do an innovation series, and that could yeah. be the content of a blog. Then, then you're on to a winner because that requirement then becomes um, an infinite a source of SEO keywords, authority yes. in the space, and yeah. and so on. Um, do you know what I was going to say to you actually? Um, because at this point, I like to flip the table, and the guest can be the interviewer. Because right. well, it shouldn't be so much one ways, but maybe there's there's loads of different ways you could go. Because I've created created the architecture social. I run the social media and I run a website, which the views are growing, uh, which is great. So you could, <laughs> if you want, interrogate me on a few points in that, Brian. Or you can talk about anything you want. Uh, I wouldn't know much about the World Cup, but feel free to ask me I any questions. I, I don't either. I just I I just read the headlines. So. Um, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, what do you find is the most challenging part of, let's say, updating or maintaining your website? Do you know, one of the most um, time-consuming bits indirectly was recording not live podcasts because, um, so for example, we've done we've done the, the dangerous but also exciting thing of we're going live. So the downside right. of going live is in theory, Oh my goodness, things can go wrong. Like my internet went a little bit jittery earlier, maybe whatever, right? Yeah. But you have to just right. roll with it. The downside, in my opinion, of recording podcasts offline is that then you've got to really got to edit to them. It takes time. You've got to polish them up. You've got to get someone involved. And I found that really difficult. So I gravitate towards this. I also try to be very economical with my podcast in, in a way. So for example, after recording this, I will rip the sound and I will put it on Spotify and I, I try to edit it a bit. I always try when we hear, for example, like earlier, I talked about 
my old um, my old friend, my old colleague, and the stuff he's brought up. So Yogesh right now is saying, I'm not that old. Don't worry, Yogi. We know you're not that old. But I always try to annotate stuff to include the audio speaker because to me, I've got a limited amount of time and I yep. always try to get things on the website. But then if we produce one piece of content, I then try to get that medium as far as possible, Brian. So by putting that on Spotify, it's also more inclusive, but it gets more people aware of things. Hey, maybe someone doesn't want to go into this be on LinkedIn right now at seven o'clock, but they can listen to the replay the next day. I then sure. put it on YouTube normally. Um, I will do it on YouTube. I'll put it in three days after because LinkedIn and thank you, LinkedIn have asked me to do exclusive content for LinkedIn for a while. So here we go. We're here for three days. But then I always try to put stuff on the website and I view it as I view social media. There's a falsity uh, that people say sometimes that it's a community and I don't agree. I view them as channels. And I think yeah. if you're gonna build a community, it's it's your website. And so I try to have as much unique content there as possible, but I always try then to get it out to as much channels as possible. Right. So does that make sense? So the home of yeah. this would be in the architecture social, but use as much channels. And also then goes to your point, Brian, that if suddenly um, Instagram, decides that they hate long um, videos, right. then Spotify is still happy to have a podcast. So that's yeah. the main thing I try to do. I, I do keep an eye on SEO. My general rule, though, is build relevant content and keep adding it. I try not to go back to articles I've done. There's sometimes a temptation to update mm. stuff, but I think yeah. having new stuff is fine. And like a good example, um, and last bit on the point for opening up again is like some of the thumbnails I've done on some of my old YouTube things, Brian, I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if I like it anymore. And I think architects are guilty of this, as I am, of you look at your old work and you judge yeah. yourself on that. But I always think now, like, do you know what? That's where I was in 2020 and I'm here and what I am now. And, and it's more about meeting new people like yourself, getting new angles, new perspectives. And if yep. me and you want to do something again, we'll do another episode. But I don't like to re-record the old episode. I don't even listen to them once I'm done. So I, someone, I told that yeah. to someone, it blew their mind. But I'm like, it's always looking forward. And sometimes yep. as designers, it's tempting to go back on what you've done and perfect it. But the gains, Brian, in my opinion, are not as comparable, you know? Yeah, that's exactly, I, I you, you, uh, you touched on a, a few things that I think are really important. Um, number one, uh, consistency, right? Uh, you, you know, Google, our, our friends at Google, they really love it when we're consistent and we're, we're coming out with new content and so forth. Now, does that mean you need to do something every day? No. Does it mean yeah. you need to do something every week? No. Um, my advice on that is like, if you, you know, if you want to have a good judge of like, how much content should I be creating? Like I said before, you could have one article that's like a total winner and yeah. is getting all the traffic for your website. But also look at, look at your top competitors on Google. Try to find your firm in a Google search what would your clients look for in a Google search? If you're not coming up on that first page, yeah. uh, then there's something wrong with your website. And you might want to start looking at the websites that are on that first page and making some comparisons to see what you need to do to, to fix things. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, from the recruiting standpoint, uh, what are are there any are are there so so here's here's something that I another pet peeve I have yeah, is when on. I go to a architecture website and there's you go to the about page and it's basically a CV of the principal right mm, yeah what, what's your thoughts on that is I mean to me that just seems like like that's not why I, what an about page should be about right it should I, be about I, something something related to what me as the client would need from you and uh, how you're going to help me right yeah i think generally it's a missed opportunity i think the bit that you pointed on earlier which is hilarious say now there's 50 people in the company it will just be a bounce section of the two principles <laughs> yes. and it's like okay well actually you know when someone's designing your house you kind of want to know about who's designing your house 
Yeah. So I, I think it should be inclusive. A good example um, of a website which I've seen is actually pokes a bit of fun on it. So I think there's a company called Matt Architecture. And um, when you hover over the images, I think if you click in them or something, so they've got the normal, like, hey, it's me in an architecture practice image. And then when you go into it, they've gone another level. So they're not just showing their hobbies of like, hey, this is me and the guitar. And I've seen that kind of stuff and it can work really well. Right. But they are all bizarrely like dressed in Victorian clothes in their existing office. And there's one guy on CAD wearing like Henry VIII clothes and stuff. So oh, you have I, to send me that. You have to I, send me I, that. I will. And I'd be tempted to bring it up here, but I will put the link in for all you people listening. So I think it's mattarchitecture.co.uk. And Brian, I'll show it to you at the end. But it made me laugh. It made me really laugh. And they also, again, are very, very good from a marketing point of view because there was one project that they had, which I can't, I, it was a witty title, but anyways, in the description, rather than this being like, this is a residential project X square meters, okay, which is really important, but saying all this stuff, they were like, this project was a slog. Okay, no one wanted to work yeah. in it. The project manager didn't want to work on it. The planning consultant was pulling out the hair. We had four planning consultants, but in the end, we got it through. And it was good, and I read it, and I was like, wow, this is not just the cliche stuff. So in recruitment, uh, the what people do when they haven't got any imagination, Brian, is that they write the same old random, um, I think I can swear, but they write yeah. the same old <laughs> rubbish, right? And, uh, and they usually sounds like, and hear me now, an exciting opportunity. I mean, what does that mean? Okay. Right. A tight knit team is another offender, you know, design centered approach. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, well you should, you one with hope, right? You, you, yes. You, so, <laughs> so we, in the obvious. Yes. Correct. And I think the way job descriptions and projects can be written the same. So I think actually trying to have something menial, meaningful and poignant is, is, is important it's hard though i've done it myself it's much easier yeah. for me to go an exciting opportunity in central london in a in a regentrified area up and coming it's really easy for me to do that because they're all quick things but, but it's easy for everybody else too yeah you don't get the same meaning from it so i think it yeah. does pay to go that extra length and, and yeah. write meaningful content and and so when you said about the about page, I think it's just as much about that. And I think maybe, and also I think it's a really good team building exercise to get people in when they yeah. join to say, Hey, here's your picture, or you get one freshly made. What would you like to put in your bio and add something personal in there? Yeah. You know, are you a DJ on the weekend or something? This is not unprofessional. It's actually character building. So yeah. on the about page, I think that's the missed opportunity typically is the people you yeah. know yeah absolutely i i agree 100 percent um that's one of the things that we do when we uh when we were developing content for a website that's that's one of the key things we do is is we help them with the bios and we always ask personal questions and like you know uh uh well well we try to bring out like okay well what do you do as a human being outside of this job because you know you're not a robot you're not strapped to your desk yeah uh, yeah and uh, we want to know who you are right yeah exactly and i promise you i am listening but i've got a little treat here for you okay oh boy. so the matt architecture website we is still live and let's click on randomly the directors. There we go. So we, we, we Matt Architecture is still um, living it up. I think that was my favorite one. Oh of, um, my God, that is hilarious. Right. So shout out to Matt Architecture. I've always admired their architecture from the far. Yeah. But yeah, yeah live, live. That, that's, that's creative, fun stuff. I mean, why not? Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, it, 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 I bet it's a it's a good conversation starter, right? It, exactly. I'd kind of fancy having a chat with them, and they do beautiful projects as well. So, yeah. for uh, Matt Architecture, if you're tuning in, while I know this is a raunchy title, your website is not useless, and it's the opposite. So, we, what, we this is good stuff. I love it. We, We've actually we cut we give one good example, didn't we, Brian? Of, of as well as a lot of offenders. So I'm going to quickly 
bring up your website. But Brian, we're winding down now. So if anyone's got, re you know, inspired by what we talked about, they want to reach out to you um, or, or any of that stuff. Can you tell us where they find you? Yeah, just go to arcmark.co, uh, not .com, .co. Uh, yeah. It's right there on, on under my uh, under my face uh, next to my name there. Uh, this is our website. Um, yeah, reach out to us. Uh, you can reach out to us by email at info at arcmark.co, or you can go through our website. We do have a, a, a start here button that'll take you to our uh, our. Uh, or scheduling page. What you mean? No, no JavaScript or big contact forms. No, I'm a there's there might be some JavaScript, but there's no uh, no funky no funky flash. Oh, that's good. It it loads up fast on my computer. So very good. Um, that's good. Spe <laughs> especially with my dodgy network. So we're halfway there. But Brian, you've been an awesome guest. I'm sure we'll talk in the future about more stuff. So thank you for joining. I really appreciate it. Hey, thank you so much for having me, man. I I, I really. I, you know, I reached out to you because I saw one of your interviews and I was just like, this guy has so much energy. I I just love to be on a show and I uh, really appreciate you. Having Says me. you, you're the awesome pitcher. I love it. You have, <laughs> you have the best, uh, best mug shots I've seen. Brian, you're an absolute legend. I'm going to end the podcast in one minute, but stay on the stage, Brian. And thank you for tuning in now on LinkedIn, or if you're watching the recap, hey, that's what it's all about. And who knows, we're going to, as we were talking about, keep building content that because you, why not? Google's going to love it. And we'll see, can the architecture social get to the top of Google? Or more importantly, perhaps you've got your personal website. Come on, take a few of the lessons that we talked about. I've killed myself for hours. So skip all those hard lessons and steal a few of the tips that me and Brian were talking about. Or if you run your own architecture practice, the way I look at it is, you can always keep building up and don't be embarrassed if your website isn't quite where you want. The best thing I think is just to kind of take a fresh, well, what's it called in architecture is maybe it's not quite going back to the drawing board, but version two or version three, four, five. So on that note, I'm going to end the live stream. Brian, um, stay on the stage and everyone in the audience, enjoy the rest of the football and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.